I've been reading online forums like Reddit and Quora where internationals have been asking the question, do I need a German style CV to nail a job in Germany? And the answer is no, not necessarily. However, having a German style CV might be very beneficial to you to actually get invited to job interviews. And the reasons are simple. Now, recruiters and HR in Germany have shared in multiple surveys that the CV is the number one most important document in a job application. And they take less than 30 seconds to decide whether they invest more time and the CV should be considered or not. Now, with only 30 seconds of attention, you want to make sure that the value you can bring to the company is as easy and as clear to understand as possible. And the best way to do that is providing a familiar format. Now, for you to understand how your CV will be perceived, let's actually switch roles. And now you are HR and you have to figure out how many years of experience I've had as a web developer with the two CVs we're going to show you. One CV is going to be a designery one, actually one of my old CVs, and the other one is one following our German style CV template. So let's start with a designery one and you will have five seconds to figure out how many years of experience I have as a web developer. Go. Okay, great. Now let's do the same exercise again with this CV following our German style CV template. Five seconds, go. Fantastic, that's it, exercise is over. Now we hope that you could see the difference and realize that following a German style CV, it was a lot easier to scan the dates on the, in the column on the left and figure out that Jen at this point of time had three years of experience as a web developer. Now it was a little tricky because that was of course in the past, usually you would know when present time is, but you also see that there's a date at the CV, which point was dated in 2019. Now the designery one, I don't know how you feel, but when I looked at it, and back in the day we didn't have the experience that we have now or looked into it so much, that's why it looked the way it looked, um, I couldn't find the dates at first glance. I had to search, I had to waste valuable time to find the information I was looking for and hence had less time available to then actually follow up on other things I want to know. I hope you feel the same. Let me know in the comments. So by following this format, you're not pretty much doing yourself a favor. You're actually helping the other person, the one reading your CV, to quickly find the information they're looking for. Because one of the first things is how many years of experience does this person have? It's like the critical point. Now let's look at other principles a German style CV will have. Next to the possible two column structure we already highlighted is of course also the length of a CV. Now there's a lot of talk out there, but we strongly believe that a German style CV should not be longer than two pages. Again, 30 seconds. If it's four pages, no one will look at that. And I would question, is this all relevant? Yes, there's also talk that sometimes they say per 10 years of experience, you should add another page. But at the end of the day, do 30 years of experience in the past matter for what job you're supposed to perform right now? We don't believe so. We believe your CV should be relevant for the position you're applying for. When you were a hiring manager in Germany, would you ever receive more than two pages in a CV? No, but I also wouldn't be hiring people with 40 years or 30 years of experience. Mm. So that is an unfair question. Yeah. Okay. Now next up, and this one is super important because we have seen various CVs that are not German or for the German market. And the first thing that I see on my reaction is like, Poh! because <laughs> there is no white space. Now for the German eye, I mean, I'm so sorry that I always say German, but at least for the German market eye, how about that? Um, there needs to be white space uh, between paragraphs uh, as a frame, a margin around the page. Don't squeeze as much information as possible on the page because you think, the more the better, but rather limit the information to what's relevant and make that concise and easy to understand. Because if I only see black of text, again, I cannot scan it. So to give you some parameters, the minimum margin between both left, right, top and bottom should be two centimeters and also add spacing between sections. That is super important as well. You don't need to cramp everything in one page, even if you don't have so many years of experience as let's say this 40 year experienced person, right? Now, if you put your information and somehow it doesn't fit in two pages, then I'm sorry to say, but you have too many things in there. You need too much to, fluff. Too much fluff. You need to reduce information to the most important stuff. Another important thing to point out, Germans really dislike fluff and self-promoting sentences or also empty buzzwords like, I am a team player with communication skills that has experience in international teams. That says nothing. It says nothing about your experience. It's more like how, which projects do you work for and how did you quantify that information? We will talk about that a little bit more later. But I wanted to point out is that if 
adding all this space seems that you can't fit everything, then you need to reevaluate what is important to add to your CV. Second principle is the design of the CV. And here we go again to less is more, keep it simple. And there is this whatever reason in the world that it needs to be designery and modern and chic and hip, but that is not what is trending in Germany. That is not what recruiters or HR would like to see because again, they need to search for what they're looking for. Keep it simple, keep it concise and clean and professional. That is the most important. Now, there are exceptions, of course, if you're a graphic designer or applying in any visual, um, visual area, of course, in this sense, your design stands out and is a trademark to your craft. So everything we're saying, please take it with a grain of salt. Yes, but also important to highlight because I've seen someone, a CV of someone applying for a designery position and instead of using words, they use a lot of icons and elements that again don't transmit the message. Like if I see interest and there's a pizza slice, how is this going to help me figure out if you're going to be a good fit for the team that is like, let's say, web developers building an online shop. Yeah, or think about it, putting a pizza slice as your interest, what value do you bring to the company? Yeah. Zero. So cheesy, a cheesy value. Cut that out. <laughs> Um, again, it comes down to content matters more over design and content in a clear format matters. So I remember when I created my designery template, wow, it took me a very long time. Actually, if you're a designer, you might think, Jen, that is really a horrible template. But for me, in that time, it took me a very long time to figure out like, where do I put the elements? How do I make everything fit? It was like a lot of time just used on that. Versus if I would have focused on the content, that would have been a lot better. So with our CV template, so when I translated the designery one to the German style one, it was so easy because I just needed to figure out, okay, what information can I put Put to transmit my value as a web developer versus figuring out, hmm, how do I position this element so it looks cool in context for the rest, which at the end of the day is irrelevant for finding a job. If you want to use our template, you can find a link to it in the description box below. Now, principle number three is no spelling mistakes. Correct. This is super duper important. And there's actually also in, in surveys that the moment there's a spelling mistake, some HR or whoever reads the CV just drops it hmm. because it simply conveys unprofessionalism, lack of attention to detail, and simply that you don't care. Yeah. Now, did you spot the spelling mistake on my designery CV? If not, I put it here for you to see it. And doesn't it look horrible? If I would read that, I'd be like, dude, seriously? <laughs> like, no, let me give a chance to someone who is more serious about this job application. Principle number four is the order of the information. And this is also maybe different in your home country, but the typical German format is to place your information in the reverse chronological order. And that applies to work history as well as to education. Always start with the last one that you did or with an education with the highest education format, which is typically the last one that you did. Yeah, so there are three examples that I would like to point out. Number one is that if you are applying for a master's or to enter university, then the most important thing could be here, the education. So you should put that first. If you're a student applying for a job, then you should put your experience first. That can be internships or traineeships or any other experience that you've had working anywhere. And the other thing is what happens if you have, let's say 10 years of experience in the field and you're transitioning, let's say to software development and you want to apply for jobs, what do you put first? So you should, the CV should be focused on the new role that you want to um, apply for. Let's say you have 10 years experience in marketing and you just completed a bootcamp in software development and you want to get a job there. So the first thing that I need to see from your CV is that you are an, want a job as a software developer. So the first thing should be your bootcamp, your project that you did. And let's say if you do put a professional profile, which we talk about more also in our CV template, whether you should put one or not, um, the first sentence should be junior software developer or software developer with X amount of time and projects. And then you can, of course, phrase also with 10 year experience in marketing and highlighting how that experience helps you because maybe you have more understanding of um, a website design, of, uh, of a user flow, of, of how a button could work here. It's a little bit of a flow between UX and development, but highlight first what you want to get, what job you want to get and what value you bring, and then blend in your experience, how that adds value to the company. 
don't go in as a 10 year uh, 10 year professional marketing because then it's like wait i'm not looking for no marketing experience <laughs> yeah, yeah. i'm looking for a software developer yeah fair point principle number five is to quantify your achievements but the big question here is what does quantify mean so for my understanding quantifying means to add numbers as to an outcome to mm. a result um, that you have been able to drive now this sometimes can be quite difficult because maybe you don't know what outcome you had in the past in terms of numbers but it's okay to give it as a rough estimate for two reasons one whenever you have numbers in a cv they catch my eye when i'm scanning mm. i see numbers more than words mm. so the moment i see a number i hold and i read maybe five words and then if they are intriguing i continue reading and second this is the best way to highlight your impact that you had uh, in a bigger scale do you have an example for us? Yes, I do. So I will give you two examples. One is as a developer, right? Because that's what I actually transitioned into. And the other one is an example when I was actually a customer service mm -hmm. representative. So let's start with a developer. We'll put them on the screen. The first example, see the difference between I code projects for campaigns for different clients, supervise other projects to make sure they are running smoothly. I didn't actually wrote that in my CV, not on purpose, and set up new servers when necessary. Versus coded five websites in three months for different clients in Germany that run interactive giveaways using WordPress and React. Each website receives on average 150,000 visitors daily. So that is a quantified statement that tells me so much more than the first one. Yes, now let's go to a customer service one. The example is, I provided technical support via email and phone to sellers on the e-commerce site. Versus, I answered over 100 inquiries daily from sellers on the e-commerce website under 24 hours, which allowed the company to comply with fast response times with a 4.5 satisfactory rate. Wow, now I understand the speed you're working at. 100, in my opinion, is quite a lot. Within 24 hours, and I help I can and I understand that this is kind of like a value that the company would like to portray to answer fast and satisfactory. I can read so much more than just I did my job. Yeah. Next to our CV template, you would also receive a writing guide that goes more in depth of how to quantify achievements in different scenarios and with different examples. Principle number six is the photo. And I would say this is a bit of a controversial one. That is correct. Yeah, there's also a lot of talk about this. Now to the typical traditional German CV, it always comes with a professional headshot, with a professional photo. However, there's of course also anti-discrimination laws in Germany, so there is no legal requirement to put a photo. Hmm. And we believe that you should follow what you are most comfortable with. And if you put a photo, it should be a professional one that shows you from your best side and don't put a photo that is not professional because that will only hurt you. Yes, and also I would say if you put a photo, if you can put a little smile on your face, it opens your face to being more friendly than just like being all serious because that again is the first impression the person reading it that will, they, they will have like, wow, this is a very friendly person or wow, this is a super serious person. I'm not so sure it would match with our team, you know? Right, the photo should be professional, so ideally taken by a pho photographer in a studio. There's tons of them in Germany, um, sometimes in like little malls or shopping centers. And uh, you should be wearing professional attire. But don't wear a suit and tie unless you're applying for the banking or finance sector. I'm also of the opinion that it's okay to wear a hoodie if you're applying for super young startup-y companies, as long, again, it's a professional photo. You know, yeah, I think that's just the Yeah, just an outfit like you're wearing right yeah, now. Yeah, for example. Yeah. <laughs> also, additional to that, like having a professional photo, it's really like 25 euros, I think, and they give you like printed pictures and digital pictures. And I mean, you can try different poses, so it's not that expensive also to get this picture done. Principle number seven is to be honest on your CV. Now, there are two points I would like to talk about this topic. Number one is the question, should you do your CV in English or German? And here comes the honesty part. If you don't speak German fluently, then do it in English. Because if you do it in German, two things can happen. Number one, you will probably have a thousand spelling mistakes, not because uh, you know you don't, you don't speak German, but also German written German is very complicated and professional written German, oh my God, like forget about it. <laughs> and number two, if you do it in German, you will set the expectations of the person reading your CV that you are fluent in German. So imagine the situation that they contact you, they give you a call, they speak German and you answer all unconfident or like you don't understand. That kind of breaks a little bit the trust. So I would say if you're not fluent in German, then stick to English. Now, if you're fluent in German and you can speak German, 
then it's okay to do your CV in German. However, I would recommend if you're not a native speaker to find a native speaker just to go over it because again, professional German can be very tough to implement. We have a friend who speaks fluent German, has a German passport, but he wasn't born and raised in Germany. He studied in a German school uh, back home in Guatemala and his CV when he presented it was a mess. There was uh, words that didn't make sense or things that were out of order. Sentence structure mainly. Sentence also, structure yes. mainly. So that's just a word of warning. And principle number two in this being honest is again this gapless CV situation. If you've had a gap in your career, let's say in the last 10 years or in a relevant amount of time um, that you've been working, then you should include it and just explain why you took this gap for. Taking care of a family member, learning the language, uh, Germ learning German with an intensive course, um, traveling as a career break, whichever it is, put it, explain it, and you know, just kind of like say, this is what I did, now I'm ready to work again, or I continued working afterwards. That way I understand what you did, perfectly fine for me to follow, then leaving it out and me questioning why is there a break and why did you not mention it? Hmm, exactly. Now, if your break happened 10 years ago, then maybe it's not relevant to nowadays, so you don't need to put it, I'd say. Now I have a question for you. Now, to make this clear, if you don't know much about Yvonne, before we started Simple Germany, she was actually a hiring manager in a company in Germany. And so you have experience reading CVs and actually hiring people and stuff, right? So when you were receiving CVs, do you remember which ones were the ones that actually um, like impressed you the most? Yes, and I would say those that um, brought a point across that they took time to adapt the CV to the company and the role. Hmm. So it was not just a standardized CV that gets sent out to every like, 50 different applications, but where I could clearly see with keywords, with experience put forward, with um, yeah, other touches that this person um, is aware about what the camp company stands for, is aware about the, or at least thinks the expectations of the role. Um, and that of course enticed me more because I could see that the person put effort in it. And the ones that enticed me most were actually the professional looking ones and not the designery, more playful ones because I was not looking for playfulness, I was looking for professionalism. Yeah. And also I actually did interview a few people without a picture, um, as long as the content conveyed um, that there is a potential right fit. Yeah. That's super interesting. Now, if you're looking for a German style CV template, we created one for you, which you can download on the link in the description box below. When you buy this template, you will also get a writing guide that goes into really deep detail on how to fill out a section. We cannot do this in a video because then it would take a very long time, I think, and we would lose you probably, <laughs> but it, it's easy to follow. And at the end of following this guide, you will have a killer CV that you will increase your chances of getting job interviews in Germany. Right, the whole package also includes two real life CVs so you also see what it should or could look like, um, as well as a checklist at the end. So you can kind of like review yourself and the template is editable in Microsoft Word and Mac pages. You can download a copy of the German CV template and all the bonuses at simplegermany.com slash CV dash template, or you can click in the description box below. Until next time, tschüss. Yeah, but maybe we should say the link below and additionally to the template. Ah, okay, okay. I don't know, it just okay. sounded better in the phone. Okay, okay. On the phone? In the flow. Oh. <laughs>